Hi students, thank you for tuning in. Here is the study guide video that I had promised in class. Uh, let's zoom in. Okay, problem number one, 5x plus 6 is equal to 21. Uh, we go ahead and subtract 6 from both sides. That cancels out our 6s. We're left with 5x is equal to 15. Dividing both sides by 5. We get x is equal to 3. All right, question number 2. We have 3m divided by 7 is equal to 21. So opposite of dividing by 7 is multiplying both sides by 7. All right, so multiplying by 7 cancels out that denominator. We get 3m is equal to, what would that be, 147? All right, dividing both sides by 3. Let's see, 3 times uh, 50 would be 150. So m is equal to uh, 49. m is equal to 49. All right, question number three. We have two times r minus three is equal to two r plus six. Uh, distributing two to the r, that's two r. Two times negative three, that's negative six, is equal to two r plus six. All right, so we want to get the r's to be on one side, so we subtract two r from both sides. All right, so normally doing that, you'd still be left with R on one side, but what happens is that they both cancel out, and we're left with a weird equation. Negative 6 is equal to 6. That's weird, but it's still an equation. Negative 6 is equal to 6. That's never going to be true, so we conclude that this is no solution. All right, so things to remember. If your last solving step is a true statement, like 8 is equal to 8, what should your answer be? Well, let's get to this other, uh, this next one. If your last step, if your last solving step is a false statement, like 0 is equal to 9, what should your answer be? Well, as we just had, we had that same situation up here. So that was no solution. So basically, if we have a number equaling a number, and it is true, that would be the other situation we think about. Infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. All right, what is the difference between an equation and an expression? Well, if we think about just an expression, an expression doesn't have an equal sign. So no equal sign. And then, of course, the equation does. So equal sign. Once again, no equal sign and equal sign. That's the only difference. Huge difference, but that's the that's the only difference. All right, question number four. Find the domain and range of each relation, then determine if the relation is a function. If it is a function, state it. Okay, um, so let's see. We have our coordinate points, right? We don't have a graph. They're just coordinate points. So we want to use our set notation to write this domain. Domain is all our x values. So let's see, in order from least to greatest, we would write uh, 0, 2, 3, and then 8. Once again, using our fancy curly brackets. So 0, 2, 3, and 8. And our range, well, that would be our y values. So let's see, that would be 1, 2, 2, and 5. But remember, since that 2 repeats, we don't have to write it twice. So 1, 2, and 5. And is this a function? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. There's only one 
y value for every x value. Or if we remember uh, the easy way I stated it during class, each x has only one y. Each x is only one y. So yeah, that matches up with our definition here. Function, yes. All right, question number five. Graph the equation below on decimals.com, then state the domain and range. Uh, one second. All right, so if you graph this on Desmos, the domain, remember domain is the, the furthest left our graph goes all the way to the right. So we would have, uh, using our brackets, that'd be negative 2.828. And then all the way to the right, that'd be positive 2.828. And then our range, that'd be from the, the lowest part of our graph to the highest part of our graph. If we look on Desmos, that's going to be negative 1.414 all the way to positive 1.414. All right, is this a function? No, it's definitely not. All right, fails the vertical line test. Or if you think about it in terms of just the definition without thinking of that, maybe that shortcut vertical line test, each X can only have one Y. So if we look at, well, maybe if you look at our graph, the input one has two outputs, which would be, uh, what would it be? 1.23. It's around there. One point, let me try to get it exact. 1.323 and then negative 1.323. So two different outputs for one input. All right, the graph below does not represent a function. What is the test called that we perform um, in order to check if a graph represents a function or not? Well, the vertical line test, as I just said. So literally, we can draw a vertical line test anywhere on this graph. But if we draw one right there, that fails the vertical line test, right? Because it passes our graph at two points, right here and then right there. So not a function. <laughs> All right, moving on. Question number seven, function notation. Find f of x plus g of x minus h of x. All right, so f of x, that's 3x squared. g of x, that's 2x minus 6, so plus 2x minus 6. And then h of x, so let's be careful here. We're subtracting h of x, so we have to subtract the whole thing. So minus 3x plus 1, right? We have to subtract the whole thing, so we put it in parentheses. So that definitely changes our, our um, expression. Right, because we have to, we can think of as distributing this negative one. So we would have to write uh, minus 3x, and then that plus one changes to a minus one. And then we bring everything else down 3x squared plus 2x minus 6. All right, and then 2x minus 3x. All right, let's start at the beginning. 3x squared, right? There's no other like terms. 2x minus 3x, that gives us minus x. And then negative 6 minus 1, that gives us minus 7. And that's your final answer. All right, question number 8. They actually tell us what x is, and they actually tell us what x is for the f function and what x is for the h function. So as I did in class, try to figure this out separately, right? f of 3, that's going to be equal to 3 multiplied by 3 squared. All right, order of operations. I saw in class a lot of you had 81 because you multiplied 3 times 3 and then you squared it. Order of operations, we do exponents first. 3 squared, that gives us 9. 9 times 3, that's 27. Then let's figure out h of negative 2 first. 
Well, h of negative 2, that tells us we plug in negative 2 into this function. So 3 times negative 2. Um, then plus 1. So that gives us negative 6 plus 1. So that's negative 5. And then now we put everything all together. Uh, we know f of 3 was 27. We're going to bring down that minus. We're going to bring down that 2 because we still have to do that. And then we're going to multiply it by whatever we got for h of negative 2. We said that h of negative 2, we did the math already, that's negative 5. All right, so now we do this. So multiplication first, right? Negative 2 times negative 5, that'll be uh, 27 plus 10. Final answer is 37. All right, question number nine. We want to find x if h of x is equal to seven. Well, this one they're not telling us to input seven, right? That that'd be h of seven would be equal to something. This is telling us that h of x, that whole function is equal to seven. So if we look, we know h of x is three x plus one. And they are telling us this function is equal to seven. So literally we would equal it to seven. All right, and then solving, subtracting 1 from both sides, we get 3x is equal to 6. Dividing both sides by 3, we get x is equal to 2. All right, question number 10. Find A if G of A is equal to 2. Then use that value of A to find F of A. So this one sounds confusing at first, but just take it one step at a time. Let's work with that first statement. Find A if G of A is equal to 2. So G of A, that tells us wherever we see an X, we're going to replace it with an A. And we know it's going to be equal to 2. So what's our G of X? Our G of X is... 2x minus 6, so we write 2a minus 6. So 2a minus 6, and we know that's going to be equal to 2, as it says. And now we just need to solve for a, adding 6 to both sides. We get 2a is equal to 8. Finding both sides by 2, we get a is equal to 4. All right, so that's the first step. Now they say use the value of a to find f of a. Well, we know a is 4, so now we need to find f of 4. So let's see. f of 4, that's going to be equal to, well, what's our function f? That's 3 multiplied by 4 squared. All right, once again, order of operations. Exponents first before multiplication. So 4 squared, that gives us 16. And then 16 times 3 gives us 48. All right, question number 11. Find a point slope equation using the information given. So point slope, All right? Let's just rewrite that. Formula y minus y1 is equal to m multiplied by x minus x1. All right, so this one, they give us all the information we need. We need to just literally replace it. y minus 5 is equal to uh, 2 multiplied by x minus x1. Yeah, and you guys can just leave it as that. I know in class today I simplified it to be x plus 3, but you guys can leave it as that. All right, 3 comma 3 and 5 comma 6 are the points of the line. So now they don't give us a slope, but we can find the slope by uh, subtracting our y's. 
over subtracting our x's. So 6 minus 3 over 5 minus 3. That gives us 3 halves. All right, so our slope is 3 halves. And then we do have a point. They give us two points, but it doesn't matter which one we choose. So let's just go with 3 comma 3. So we write y minus 3 is equal to 3 halves x minus uh, x1, that'd be 3. All right, so distributing, we get um, y minus 3 is equal to 3 halves x minus 9 halves. And adding 3 to both sides, right, we want to get rid of that subtract 3. So add 3 to both sides. We get y is equal to 3 halves x. Mm, okay, let me just not skip steps. Minus 9 halves plus 3. But we want to make this the same denominator. So that will be plus 6 halves. All right, combining like terms, we get y is equal to 3 halves x minus 3 halves. That's our final. Oh, I apologize. My bad. We are just writing this in, uh, I was thinking about number 15. Just number 12, we just have to keep it as this. Number 12, we just have to keep it as that. All right, so on number 15, I'll go back to what I showed up here because that's literally the answer for number 15. Okay, then number 13, m is equal to 0 and 7 comma 12. Okay, so we do the same thing, y minus y1, which is 12, is equal to 0 multiplied by x minus 7. And yeah, we just leave it as that. So at 14, 15, 16, now we need to write all of this into slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept form, we just need y by itself, and then we need to simplify all this good stuff. All right, so on the right-hand side, let's simplify this first. We get y minus 5 is equal to, so that's going to be 2x. Uh, let's just not skip steps. 2 multiplied by x plus 3. Distributing that 2, we get y minus 5 is equal to 2x plus 6. Adding 5 to both sides, we get y is equal to 2x plus 11. All right, so equation in slope-intercept form, that's going to be exactly what I have here, y is equal to mx plus b. Our slope is 2, our intercept is 11. All right, 3 comma 3, 5 comma 6, equation in slope intercept. Um, so that's literally what I showed over here. So if you are still confused about how I got that, just rewind it to uh, question number 12. So equation that's going to be y is equal to 3 over 2x minus 3 over 2. Our slope is going to be 3 halves. Our intercept is going to be minus 3 halves. All right, equation in slope-intercept form, so we need to simplify this. We know that 0 multiplied by anything, that's still going to be 0. It doesn't matter what this number is. So we get y minus 12 is equal to 0. And then adding 12 to both sides, we get y is equal to 12. So that's our equation in slope-intercept form. We don't have a slope, but we do have a y-intercept, specifically 12. So y is equal to 12. Once again, no slope, right? No slope, so 0. And then our intercept is going to be 12. Yeah. 
All right, question number 17. So we want to try to get rid of a variable. The easiest one to do here is just x because we only have to multiply this top equation by 2. If we wanted to eliminate y, we'd have to multiply both of these equations by something. Um, anyways, let's multiply this by 2. We would get 14y plus 4x is equal to negative 46. On the top, we just rewrite that over again. All right, 4x minus 4x, that cancels out. So we are subtracting these equations. 14 minus a negative 5, that's the same thing as adding them. So 19y is equal to negative 46 minus 49. Uh, shoot, what does that give us? 95, I think, minus 95. Yeah, minus 95. All right, dividing both sides by 19, we should get negative 5, hopefully. Yeah, that sounds correct. Y is equal to negative 5. All right, we already have y. Now we just need to find x by plugging back in. I like working with this one. Looks simpler. So 7 times negative 5 plus 2x is equal to negative 23. So that's going to be negative 35 plus 2x is equal to negative 23. Adding 35 to both sides, we get 2x is equal to uh, 35. What would that be? 12? Yeah, 12. Sorry. And then dividing both sides by 2, we get x is equal to 6. <laughs> All right, so on the test, uh, yeah, these would be your two answers that you definitely need. Uh, number 18, it gets a little funky. So I told you guys you didn't have to do that one. We just get fractions for those. Not that fractions aren't okay, but it's just really, it gets really messy. All right, question number 19. Um, so for this one, I would recommend just substitution because we already have y solved for that, and now we just need to replace it, right? We know that y is equal to 3x plus 2, so we can literally replace that into that y, right? Because they tell us it's equal to that, so we're just going to substitute it. So 3x plus 2, and we substitute it for that, minus 3x is equal to negative 8. All right, then from here, 3x minus 3x, those cancel out. On the left-hand side, we're just left with 2. On the right-hand side, we're left with negative 8. All right, so 2 is equal to negative 8. That's never true. Okay, no solution. Or NS, as I said in class. You can just write that on your tests. All right, lastly, our three by three systems of equations. Uh, so we want to think about eliminating one variable. Mm, if I was looking at this personally, I would choose to eliminate the x variable. But actually, the y variables looks pretty easy, and the z variables look easy as well, too. Just because, well, I don't want to go too in-depth about it. But anyways, with the... With the x variables, we're just uh, we would just be adding that second and third equation, and then with that first equation, you could just multiply by two and add it to that second equation. But anyways, that's just my line of thinking about thinking about which ones I want to eliminate. So first, we have to eliminate our x variables, and then we should end up with an equation with just y and z, two equations. Sorry, with just y and z. Anyways, let's just go through it. So I'm going to use the second and third equation. And then just to show you guys, I'm going to rewrite these two equations again. 
literally just as they are. All right, so adding these equations together, these cancel out, so we get 6y plus 2z is equal to 7. All right, and then now we want to use this first, I mean, technically it doesn't matter which one we use for, we can either use the first or second or the first or the third. I like using the first and the second though, just so, I don't know, it's easier. They're right next to each other, less chances of making mistakes. But we need to multiply this first equation by two, right? Because we are trying to get rid of our x's. So two times x, that gives us two x plus four y minus two z is equal to negative eight. All right, then negative 2x plus 4y minus z is equal to 6. All right, so 2x minus 2x, those cancel out, so we're adding them, right? Adding the 2 plus a negative 2x. So now we have to add our y's. That gives us 8y minus 3z. That's going to be uh, negative 2. All right, so now we have a system of equations, right? So when I was seeing in class, a lot of you, the biggest mistakes is you're only, um, you weren't getting rid of the same variable from both of these. So we need to end up with two equations with the same two variables, y and z, y and z. Now we can use our systems of equations to eliminate a variable from here. So let's just, uh, let's see, we want to try to get rid of, it'll be easier if we Multiply this one by 3 and then this one by 2 so that we can get our z's eliminated. So let's do that. Multiply by 3. And then we are going to multiply this by 2. All right, so doing this one, we get 18y plus 6z is equal to 21. And then just so we can line them up, let's just write it underneath. Uh, this would be 16y multiply by 2 minus 6z is equal to uh, multiply by 2, negative 4. All right, so now I have to add these two together, right? Adding them, we get... Uh, what will that be? 34y. These cancel out, right? Adding them together cancels out. We get 34y is equal to 17. Dividing both sides by 34. We get y is equal to 1 half. All right, y is equal to 1 half. Even though it's a fraction, fortunately for us, it's a little bit easier fraction. But also, it's uh, we already solved for one variable. And once you solve for one variable, it gets easier from here, right? We just plug it back into any one of these equations. Um, any one of these equations, or it doesn't technically matter, but this one looks a lot easier. So 6y, or 6 multiplied by 1 half, plus 2 times z is equal to 7. So 6 times 1 half, that's literally what's 1 half of 6? That's 3. Plus 2z is equal to 7. Subtracting 3 from both sides, we get 2z is equal to 4. And then mental math, z is equal to 2.
All right, then we have two out of our three variables. Now we can just plug it back into any of the original equations. I'm just gonna use that first equation, it looks a lot simpler. So we don't know our x yet. So that first equation right here, we don't know our x yet, so we leave it as is. Plus two times y, which is one half. Minus two, or minus z, is equal to negative four. All right, simplifying, we get x plus two times one half, that's one. Minus two is equal to negative four. All right, one minus two, that's negative one. X minus one is equal to negative four. And then adding one to both sides, we get X is equal to negative three. All right, so we have our three variables. We are done with question number 20. All right, question number 21. If I'm looking at this, why is in the Z's look equally as um, easy to eliminate? Excuse me. Um, I personally, let's go ahead and I like eliminating the y's here. Just because if we add that first and second equation, it'll eliminate itself. So let's go and do that. First and second equation, adding them together. Uh, this time I'm not going to write them out. But anyways, negative 2x plus 3x. That gives us x. 2y plus a negative 2y, that cancels out. z plus c, that gives us 2z. That's going to be equal to 14 plus a negative 5, that's 9. All right, so now we need to work with this third equation. And let's see, it doesn't technically matter which one we use. We could either use the first and third or the second and third. Let's just use the second and third, just because they're right next to each other. And because, well, it doesn't matter because they're both twos, and then we can multiply it by two. Um, but yeah, this third equation we need to multiply by two, so let's go ahead and do that. Negative 2x plus 2y minus 4z is equal to negative 16. All right, and then we're going to write that second equation as is. So 3x minus 2y plus z is equal to negative 5. All right, so adding these together, right? 2y plus a negative 2y, those would cancel out. So we know we're going to add them together. Negative 2x plus 3x, that gives us x. Negative 4z plus z, that gives us negative 3z. That's going to be equal to negative 16 plus a negative 5. That gives us negative 21. All right, now we have systems of equations in x and a z, x and a z. Once again, make sure we have the same variables in each of these. And then let's put them next to each other. x plus 2z is equal to 9. Sorry, not x to each other. Uh, one on top of the other. x minus 3z is equal to negative 21. And then now we don't have to multiply by anything. We could just simply subtract these two equations, right? Because x minus x gets rid of this. So now we have to subtract this. 2z minus a negative 3z, that gives us 5z. That's going to be equal to 9 minus a negative 21, that gives us 30. Dividing both sides by 5, we get z is equal to 6. All right, plugging it back into, let's use this equation. We don't know what x is, so we just leave it as is. Plus 2 times 6 is equal to 9. x plus 12 is equal to 9. Subtracting 12 from both sides, we get x is equal to 9 minus 12, which is negative 3. All right, lastly, we plug back into any of our original equations. Let's use this middle one. Yeah, the middle one looks eh, there. They all, they all look equally uh, not difficult, but 
they all have negatives, but anyways, uh, yeah, let's use that middle one. So three times X, three times negative three, that's negative nine. Uh, let's see, N uh, minus two Y, sorry, we don't know what Y is, plus C, which is six, so plus six, that's equal to negative five. All right, combine like terms, we get negative three minus two Y is equal to negative five. All right, add three to both sides, we get negative two Y is equal to negative two. And dividing both sides by negative two, we get Y is equal to one. And that is our final answer. All right, thank you guys for watching. Uh, hopefully you guys are studying hard and I know you guys will do great on this test.